All right, can you just start by, um, yeah, go ahead. I like that. <laughs> um, can you start by telling me your first and last name, say and spell it for me. Uh, Dennis Dahl, D-A-H-L. And um, just tell me a little bit about coming here to the marathon and your experience uh, yesterday. Here just goes. Well, we traveled, uh, we live in the San Juan Islands and uh, went to Seattle and flew out here and got up yesterday morning and caught the bus out there and everything seemed to be going good. The, the people were just wonderful uh, along the race uh, way yesterday and uh, then about mile 25 and a half, I guess, we got stopped. I was right in the first group that got stopped and nobody knew what was going on and then a lady next to me got a phone call and her husband said there'd been a couple explosions. So everyone was just kind of hanging out there waiting to see what was going to happen and then people started getting cold and cramping up and weren't feeling well and so they lady got a text message from her husband and said the race was over. So I just started walking down the sidewalk and this lady just came and got me and took me into her apartment, gave me a blanket, gave me water, gave me some cookies, wouldn't let me leave until I was warm. And so I kind of felt better and I was really worried about my wife because I knew she'd be at the finish and so I started leaving and a man came up and gave me his coat and so I'm walking down the street and no less than the time that I met my wife I had at least eight to ten people come up and either hug me or say do you need a phone what do you need? And so finally I found her and she was just a couple blocks from the blast, her and a former student of mine. Many, many and they had to run, but yeah. it was just when I saw them, I was just, I was beside myself. So. Can you talk a little bit about, I mean, you said you thought that she was at the finish line and you heard that there were blasts. What sort of went through your head? Did you anticipate that it could be a bombing or an accident or? Oh, yeah, fine. I didn't know what no, there was, like the but yesterday. they right. said there were explosions, it? and then I had a couple people try to call her, and they were just getting her voicemail, and I, I just knew that she would be near the finish, and so I was just really worried, you know, I mean, you're, you don't know what's going on, and I was worried for her, and I knew she'd be anxious about me finding her. But anyway, it, it worked out, and, and I can't say enough about the people of Boston and the folks that are running the Boston uh, Marathon. I mean, we were just in there, and they had food for us, and, and uh, there were ministers in there, and, you know, and just, we got our bags back, and, I mean, you just, the people here are great. How did you end up reuniting? I mean, it must have been kind of chaotic down there. A policeman said to walk down towards the Boston Commons. I had no idea where that was, so I asked him and he pointed me in that direction and, and I just kept walking down there towards the Boston Commons and then finally uh, I saw runners starting to take a right and so I just followed them and then I saw school buses down there and I got down there and one of the uh, people that help support people said, yeah, the letters are up, the family place is up around there. And so I went to the D and that's when I saw those two. <laughs> I was really happy. Holy smokes. It was great. Um, can you talk a little bit about today and kind of, I, I, have you run marathons before and we're, we're walking around and there are just so many people wearing this jacket today and kind of just milling about and just sort of what that, what that means to you. Uh, I think that, uh, I saw this quote, you know, where like, it was just on somebody's cell phone, you know, if you're gonna, you pick the wrong crowd to do this to, because marathoners are tough, and you see folks are out, and they're sporting their jackets, and they're gonna be back next year. 
you know. I mean, there, it takes a lot of getting up in the middle of the winter time to go out and prepare to run a marathon. And this is like the Super Bowl of marathons. And so folks are gonna be back. I know things will be different, but uh, I think it's great. And we're talking to each other back and forth, exchanging stories, and uh, City of Boston will be all right, and the Boston Marathon will be all right. Will you come back? Uh, if I could qualify again, I'll come back. I might be getting a little old, but uh, we'll see. How we'll many see. have you done? This is the first Boston Marathon. Oh. First marathon or just first Boston? No, first Boston Marathon. And so it was really special, and uh, it's too bad that it, that it had to end that way and that we had to have a loss of life and people get hurt and I didn't actually get to cross the finish line. But that doesn't matter, crossing the finish line. It's, it's just, you know, saying prayers and, and worrying about all the folks that, that are still in the hospital. You know, this, this medal, that was like, I didn't even expect that, you know? And, it, and then to get it, that was just amazing. But this, you know, this wasn't important. It's, as long as all those people can get better and, and uh, we'll move beyond this and, and they'll do it again. They certainly will. Thank you so much. Oh, you really welcome. appreciate it. Yeah. That was great. Do you mind if we just shoot you and your wife walking down the street here? Uh, <laughs> is she going to be no. camera shy on me? No. <laughs>